Now uh, you are very tired, so I will wake you up. Uh, as Roman said, I'm working at Sintef, and uh, when I, I also worked with Almighty University uh, at Oslo, you know, at Oslo uh, where I first actually heard about this transition design. And uh, I thought, what a great idea, or what a great approach. And then I was thinking, yes, it's great, and reading these papers, but what does it really mean? How to put it in real life? What does it mean for me who actually make real things, you know? Uh, I, I make applications, I make tools people are using. So reading philosophy and that kind of things, I enjoy it, but it's not really <laughs> uh, helping me in solving my everyday problems or problems I meet at work. And when I was uh, hearing uh, of very first then of then slides, and I was thinking, amazing, you know. So uh, this uh, like artistic uh, and blurry slides, and just the, the slide was giving a message, you know, there are many futures and we don't see it clearly. And I said, yes, and my slides are of course boring because I'm completely different person. Uh, I am on the, in the yeah, Basically, I am an engineer, even I have PhD in this and that in software engineering and working now with human computer engineering and design. But basically, you know, I believe that you could solve any problem by drawing some errors and circles and squares on the paper. You know, you think and here is the problem and you solve it. And it's the way I really kind of experience the world and like even even if somebody is sick and I think yeah you know you do this and this and this and he will be well because it's not like that so so uh, I will <laughs> talk now how we at Sintef which is basically a technology research institute uh, work with sustainability uh, first I will say something about Sintef of course and how we work towards sustainability then I will give some examples of projects and then I will take one of them and explain in more details when we actually applied transition design or maybe our version of transition design to be more precise. And then I will try to, to, to uh, see what, what we have to, to say, what have we learned and give you some lessons learned. So, yes. Uh, here we are in Norway, top of the world, <laughs> a research institute. Uh, we are one of the largest research, independent research institutes in Europe, and the emphasis is on the independent, uh, meaning we have no owners. Uh, we are not um, like profit, <laughs> of course we make money, but the profit is not steering what we are doing and not steering the results. And we uh, like you trust to Sintef's research and reports. I, may, I mean, politicians make decisions based on our research, and the buildings are made and, and approved it in Norway and <laughs> also around the world based on our reports. So, so we are 2,000 of employees coming from 72 exchange, different countries. We have 3,500 or more customers. And at each point of time, we work at about 6,000 different projects with industry, with public sector, research projects, more apply applied industrial projects. So you can imagine that we really make a difference. You know, it, 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 is, it is important what we are doing, how we are doing. And uh, Sintef is established uh, 1950 and uh, to help basically to help Norwegian <laughs> industry. And our vision is, which I really like, I mean, uh, and it's very old, technology for a better so society. And I find myself in this vision and all my colleagues really. Uh, but of course the question, and it was much older than these sustainable goals. Yes, just to point this out. Uh, but of course, uh, there would be like, what does it mean better society? Would mean completely different things for these 2,000 employees, which I think with their own heads, and for our customers, and for, you know, the world around us. So now, lately, uh, we, okay, we said the better society is in a way defined by these goals. So let's see how to incorporate them in our strategies, how we are working towards them and how we are going to work towards them. 
And uh, we, uh, this is, uh, we work strategically. We use, you, we use them in planning, we use them in reporting. We use them when we select, shall we invest in this or that? Which project are we going to work on? Uh, this is maybe it's too small, but uh, this is presenting. This is from one, one of our reports, reporting on gross turnover, which make, <laughs> means basically how much money uh, uh, we have in different projects divided per different, different sustainable uh, goals. And we, in a way, can see, say that, OK, we are not equally working towards all of them. This is maybe not our goal, go, uh, <laughs> what we want either. So the, you see that the ones we, we are working most on, I, I put in bold, uh, 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 this industry innovation and infrastructure, affordable and clean energy. We are big on hydrogen and that kind of things. Uh, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, and climate action. And I have to say, when back to these 2,000 employees, we really have very different backgrounds. Uh, engineers, people coming from social science, psychology, uh, medicine. We do research really in all, po all possible areas. And uh, before I coming here, I asked Roman who is the audience, and he said designers. And I checked quickly how many designers are actually at Syntec. Not so many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like 20, 20, but they are not necessarily designers, but people who are in our group interested in design, and they're mostly industrial designers. Uh, so, and we have our group working on the uh, yeah, human research interaction, which is kind of we work on, 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 on design also. So, but we are very kind of used to this interdisciplinary collaboration and listening to other people with completely different backgrounds and trying to understand that. Uh, so now I will give you, we have many <laughs> projects which we could kind of, uh, uh, present here, but I selected two of them and the third one, which I will uh, explain in more details. Uh, this one is, you, you wouldn't know, but Westerholm is kind of west coast rural areas, uh, uh, rural area in Norway, and the project is called Gaia Westerholm. Uh, a citizen-driven environmental project with participants from all parts of society. And they, in a way, want to, to come to, <laughs> to achieve these uh, climate ambitious climate goals by learning from a history and informing the future and to use digital technology. Maybe it sounds mystical here, but uh, basically what they are doing, uh, they collect all the data like uh, from coming from sensor, coming from history, you know what we know how this, pop, um, uh, what's the name, li like with the villages or uh, uh, cities around looked like, and uh, you put all of that, how people moved, and then you, you want to visualize that, you could do it in, in um, Virtual reality, you could do it in mobile application. You, you, you made like 3D, 3D uh, projections. And there will be in, in a museum, uh, but this would be a kind of container museum that could travel around the world. I haven't kind of completely <laughs> understood how, how it will look like. Uh, but in a way, you, uh, we want to learn from history and then, you know, to, to change the future and see the consequences of what we've done earlier, how we destroyed, you know, some areas and to don't repeat the, this. So that's one we are doing, uh, my group, uh, uh, my colleagues are doing this virtual reality part and how to present this. Uh, and this is really citizen driven, so, so the community wants to do the change. Uh, another is, uh, the pro it's not a project, it's actually a research program. I, I think it's still the largest research program in Europe, uh, focusing on air traffic management aviation. Uh, it started like 2009, so it's more than 10 years and it will continue. Uh, here the goal is to transform uh, aviation industry completely because the systems we are using, they are basically more or less the same as they were uh, after the Second World War, you know, the same principles. And we, we see it doesn't work like that. Uh, so here, this was one project actually when I, I was uh, leading. Uh, first, we started on, on a basic research, research uh, project when we uh, uh, explored how optimization algorithms 
can help you to plan better, you know, when uh, on the airport and the planes uh, should take off and they are waiting one after each other. And then, of course, how you order them, it will influence <laughs> uh, consumption of uh, uh, fuel consumption and uh, the pollution, CO2 emission and everything, you know. Uh, and uh, the functionality if they will be if there would be delays and everything so we we investigated first the effects of optimization uh, technology one type of the algorithms uh, on, on 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 this uh, taxi time uh, airplane moving or uh, punctuality in one project and the the project show yeah this is a promising and then in another project which was a higher technology readiness level. I don't know if you are kind of familiar with the term, but it means how close you are to the market, you know. And this is kind of closer to the market, like in another project we made the tools actually doing that, supporting uh, air traffic controllers doing th this job, integrating these algorithms. And, and in the next project we put it in demonstrator, you, you don't want to use our algorithms <laughs> without being <laughs> in the <laughs> airport, without being properly tested. So we do it in the, you know, the, the last project. So what I, why I'm showing this is to show you that it really takes time, uh, you know, and a lot of projects to, to, to make a change. This program is organized, uh, uh, you know, they have the overall goal, okay, we should reduce CO2 emission with so many percent until 2000 something. And then uh, hundreds of projects in each of them has to show exactly its percent, how they contribute to this. So that's the way, you know, you think top down. That's one way. And then I will talk about the one project which we just finished, which is, I'm talking too fast. <laughs> <laughs> need to breathe. <laughs> uh, now I will uh, or present the pr a project on sustainable transport in rural Norway, which we just finished. It was a three years research and innovation project. Uh, it is uh, the rural areas uh, we are, we are um, talking about is something called Inlande, which is Inlande County in Norway. Uh, it is a huge area. I just realized that it is actually larger than my home country, Bosnia. <laughs> so, but it's very, uh, very few people living there. So you see population density is 7.1 inhabitants per kilometer, which is, and, and people are really uh, don't living in small villages. They, they live, there is an, a house and then you drive and drive and drive and there is another house. So, so this is just to, to explain how it is. And as you see, it's beautiful there. <coughs> yeah, it's really beautiful. But it's not so easy to be old there. It's not so easy to be young there. Uh, it's very expensive uh, to, to uh, provide, of course, the, the, um, uh, you have to provide school uh, or, or health care to everybody, it's kind of in Norwegian laws and everything, everybody, you have to provide all these services to all school kids. And then you would drive uh, a kid by taxi to the first, to the school or to the bus station because he is living or she is living far away from the school, uh, which is very expensive. So the question we wanted to, to answer in this project was how to develop uh, uh <laughs> good transport systems, uh, but which are sustainable both in, in environmental, uh, sustainable both <laughs> or to achieve both environmental sustainability, economic sustainability and social sustainability. Uh, and the, the, the uh, or not, I wouldn't say the answer, it's not the only answer, but one, one uh, concept we wanted to explore here is something called MAS, which is mobility as a services. Uh, and it is uh, now used in many, many cities where you, in a way, uh, combine all transports and especially this last mile transport, which means, you know, how to get to, to your house, exactly to your house, uh, in one pla platform. And then this, the, the 
service would provide the best uh, offer to you, which suits exactly your needs. And uh, we wanted to make such a platform, all of them are, uh, like it works fine in big cities when you have uh, many people traveling around, but it doesn't work so nice in <laughs> rural areas li li like in London. So we wanted to make one specially tailored for rural areas. But rural areas, they have long distances. Uh, okay, it's, and it costs a lot. But they have other advantages, which maybe we don't have in the, in the cities, like people trust each other. People are more willing to, to uh, help their neighbors. I mean, they are doing it without our platforms to ask their neighbor, okay, I'm going to the shop, do you need something? That kind of things, you know. Or to sit together or to uh, self-organize themselves on the Facebook when they are picking up their kids from the training so that not all of them are coming from <laughs> different uh, directions. Uh, so we wanted to make uh, such a platform. It's called uh, Smart Transport District in Norwegian, uh, STD planning, uh, which would be a holistic system for transport planning that dynamically coordinates the transport of people and goods to make the most of transport resources. And we also used some kind of old concept that we should combine transport of people and goods, uh, which was used earlier in rural areas, but now it's not allowed. Like you ask the bus driver, you come with your parcel and the bus is going somewhere and you ask the bus driver, could you take my parcel with you? It's not allowed now, <laughs> but it will be allowed as a service, you know, <laughs> but it's not allowed. Uh, but, but earlier it was kind of normal. I, I, I remember it as, as a children, somebody, child, somebody running after the bus and talking to driver. Uh, so here we have partners, uh, Foldal Municipality, which is one of our municipality there, then uh, hospital in this area, which needs to transport uh, patients. Uh, blood samples, differ different uh, medications, that things uh, <laughs> patients need. Then uh, municipality need to also do uh, transport food to the elderly. They have a different services. They are driving around. They uh, transport their elderly to their um, activities. Uh, then school children has to go to school and of course there is a public transport in county. So we thought uh, if we combine as many as of these things together, then we could make economically sustainable uh, system. And but uh, here, uh, normally this uh, economic or economy or money and environment in, in a way are um, against each other, but here it's the same because if you are uh, driving shorter, it will cost you less and it is better for environment. So it's very simple. Uh, so, and inland traffic, I just, just hear the partner, they are responsible for planning this transport of school kids and, and patients and then tour is one of these mass providers. And Sintef is doing research on optimization technology and on uh, design, interaction design, how to design th uh, um, this platform. And system which would motivate people to, to change their behavior towards uh, more sustainable uh, behavior. In a way, when we started this, one of these directors said, uh, well, we are driving people from the place, uh, they are not, <laughs> from the place that they, they, they are not, to the place they don't want to be. Uh, and we compete with, there is already a solution and solution is called private car, you know. <laughs> so so, so we, we, comp we compete with something which is very convenient to people. Uh, so you have really to motivate them to take this bus or to, to sit and uh, together share, car sh sharing or whatever. Uh, and here we applied I would say transition design. This is <laughs> where we heard of that. Uh, and I wanted to explore, uh, but what does it mean in real? I mean, they, uh, at the end, I would have a tool, like a planning tool. How could I apply this transition design to make a tool? And why transition design? Because, okay, it is an approach, as we had 
as we heard today, uh, that will lead transition towards more sustainable future. That means, okay, it's what we want. And then it calls for more holistic approach, which we already in the first, while we, uh, while we have been working on, on the preparation, we realized, yeah, yeah, we, we need to, to involve, you know, all these stakeholders. And it takes a long-term perspective. And we wanted to think beyond money, <laughs> commercial interest, which is in rural areas. I mean, it's not economically sustainable in Norway. In Norway, we know that uh, if, if you would consider just money, just everybody would move at the south. So, 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 so the, the, the state is putting money so that people could live and have a good quality of life and services yeah, outside Oslo to, or Trondheim or, or these big cities. Uh, and so what we missed when reading these papers and <laughs> discussing transition design, but how to go come from these high level sustainable goals to design prototypes, how to, to you know, do it in, in, in practice. And we proposed using a concept which uh, they used in, in, uh, for managing organization, key performance indicators in all phases. Uh, from reframing the present and future, designing intervention and waiting and observing. Of course, within this project, we, 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 we didn't do this waiting and observing, we just, we done some simulation, but this will be done in the follow-up project with higher, higher uh, technology readiness level. This is one of the two, we developed like I think at least eight different tools, uh, prototypes, concepts here. Some of them are developed my, by my students uh, and university actually is not the partner here, but <laughs> they made a <laughs> huge contribution. Uh, uh, this is the tool, the people uh, used by uh, people who are actually planning the traffic. And here, how we incorporate these key performance indicators or environment, you'll see here this spider-like uh, diagram or pentagram. Uh, here, you, you actually uh, select these different, like, okay, it is a Norwegian because it will be used by Norwegians, but uh, you choose, like, would you, what is more important, uh, costs or environment or waiting time, how much you would wait for, for the bus. And then you see how you done like for the week or the day. Uh, so we, we incorporate these key, per key performance indicators and interaction with them in the tool. And uh, when we pre this was of course evaluated by, by the users, by these operators, and they said, oh, this is so intuitive. This was like 100 steps forward. But an interesting thing, which I will come back later, is that uh, this uh, also, uh, raised discussions. We had a major there and some politicians. Uh, while the, the, the operators were evaluating, they started discussion. Oh, we really, oh, I, I, it's not literally quote. The literal quote was, shit, like 2.30 is just right now. What I can do, you know? <laughs> and then, then uh, the young people asked me all the time about <laughs> sustainability, what I'm doing. So we really have to cut this emission <laughs> by 50%. And it's tomorrow. So let's int introduce free public transport. And it was based by, uh, on, on our prototype. And, I said, and my boss said, oh, we have really a huge impact here. Yeah, 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 we have a huge impact here. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so this uh, is another, is on, on, how many minutes do I have? Three minutes. Okay, uh, this one is on social sustainability. When we explore this concept that, that uh, we, we, we uh, combine the activities for elderly uh, with mobility. Uh, because the, the, the loneliness or the elderly people are sitting alone at home, it's, it's a huge problem. Uh, and we tested it and uh, the final one was uh, that elderly are actually more capable of using technology than we believe. And they said, uh, oh, when we asked is other a problem, no, I just see the opportunities and she's 80 plus something. Uh, and the one of the person organizing this activity said, oh, this small keystroke can, can make that they uh, become engaged and come out of the house. And we made ma several prototypes, as I said, for, for, the, for the travelers, for the tourists, combining, uh, trying to, to, to uh, use this concept and in a way to motivate people to, to more sustainable solutions. 
And then I would dare to say that we had a huge, made a huge impact. Uh, and we done some simulations and our optimization technology could help you to reduce like 80% CO2 footprint or 60, 59% reduction of cost. But yes, you would travel 10 minutes longer. This was for, for the calculation or simulation done for the hospital for this pa patient. Uh, it's called patient race when patients are traveling to the hospital. Also, we've done a lot, uh, some things with uh, the young people. We had uh, the summit with, uh, with 200 workshop with 200 of uh, teenagers basically presenting their future. We got some, some um, awards for the papers, but we also actually, uh, the results were incorporated in the documents, in the official documents, and of course in the newspapers. And the lessons learned, what we have learned. This is the most important. Uh, transition design. I think this focus on, uh, of on, focus on envisioning the future initiated radically new ideas and engagement among the citizens and politicians. And it enabled collective and participatory imagination, as was mentioned early or <laughs> described <laughs> early this morning, and awareness of how close the future is. It's not that we are talking about something, psh, you know, it's, it's coming, it's here. And as also we uh, uh, said today, for some people it is reality, you know, <laughs> actually today. Uh, then uh, another th thing is that it, uh, it's difficult to explain the transition take time. These citizens, when they started the project, they said, oh, well, yes. But they were expecting driving buses and drones at the end of the project. And the major s really invested the time to explain that, guys, this is a research project, we do this, and then after that we do this, you know. Uh, so support for, for from her or from the politicians was really important because uh, otherwise people would just be disappointed at the, at the end of the project. Uh, then you have to realize that you can't solve everything in one project. You need a lot of ecology of the project. Uh, you have to actively use these uh, sustainable development goals as a tool for strategic planning in your organization. You have to build good network of uh, partners, stakeholders, and ecology of projects over a longer time. And then uh, transition design, uh, I think, really helped from moving from greenwashing to real transition. <laughs> you know, like we everybody talking, okay, uh, sustainability, but to really do something and to change the attitudes. And I noticed that in my company, just when I invited you and Clara to give invited talks, and I uh, presented the, uh, these results, and people were, oh, sustainability, you have come, come talk about sustainability. So, uh, and this use of these key performance indicators, which we proposed, were really useful to, to keeping focus on sustainability and have some common common language, common ground to talk about. Uh, also, a journalist could be your best friend. I think media helped us a lot. And of course, you spend time uh, talking to them, but it's useful. And then uh, what's next? Yeah, we already have new European projects where we will further develop the, these technology national projects and we will work further on the development of the concepts and tools and methods. And by this, I would thank you for your attention.